Hello, everyone. I have been forced to start again and again and again and again for 40 episodes. This is episode uh, 30. Oh, 40. I make you start because you're the best at it. You're the famous one, so. No, I'm not. Famous. Well, well, well actually, I might be. I'm not best, though. Like so I I'm said, sorry if you hear any any ticking or clicking in the background. I have a very noisy heater, so sorry about that in advance. Like I've said before, people might come to the podcast for me, but they stay because of you. Oh. Well, there you go. Here's my impersonation of Omega's room right now. It's not so much that. It's just the it's an old the old style water heater, so it's very loud. It's not exactly what it sounds like. Now, that's only when the neighbor is um, messing about with either his yard or his driveway. He's always uh, always cutting mowing, things. Like, always. Every every day. Like, the, you would think that there would be no more grass left, but there's not. He just... And then, the other night, it had stopped snowing, but now it was, like, serious um, freezing rain. So he's out there at 9 o'clock at night with his snowblower in the freezing rain on the driveway. And I was like, whatever. Yeah, it does seem a bit silly. But what was our word from last, like, three weeks ago? I think it was mildew. Which totally was definitely the word. Probably. It probably was mildew, so that's what we're going to roll with. Yeah, if it wasn't the word, uh, check it out. Yeah, complain to us. (laughs) Um, So, yes, mildew. Um, Oh, I hate that mildew, especially when he says, I don't believe it. What are you talking about? Um, one foot in the grave. The the the, the main character is called uh, Victor Meldrew. M- M- oh, and he's is that the kind of joke that like only the British audience will get? Yes. Why are you so racist? Because the British aren't a race, so therefore I'm not being racist. Oh yeah, I'm good. Oh, I don't like mildew. I don't like mold at all. I don't like anything like that. Didn't didn't it like try to kill you once? Yeah. Well, many years ago, I lived in a basement apartment that I shared with a girl who was a friend of a friend. And this was not the wisest thing, but I knew I wasn't going to be there the full year because it's close to the time when I bought the house. So um, the last few months, she was just there by herself. And she was a nice girl, but she kind of had this belief that housework was something unfortunate that happened to other people. Now, this wouldn't have been so bad except for the fact that it was a basement apartment that um, it had mold in the carpets, it had mold in the air. It was just literally things, if you left something on the carpet for too long, like if you had something standing up in the corner, it grew mold. Um, there were some time, nights I would wake up like coughing and choking, I was not able to breathe, and but then I got out of there and I was fine. It was like that, that terrible episode of The X-Files about the Chupacabra, which was just a... Uh people covered in mold and getting crazy mold against each other and dying from it. Do you know what? When I moved out of that place, that's what I was thinking about. Ah. And yeah. then a friend of mine um, was, like, two weeks after I moved out, uh, she was over there to hang out with this girl, and they got from Burger King and brought it back. And she gathered up, like, her wrapper and stuff to, to throw everything away. The girl said, oh, don't worry. And just kind of, like, threw it against the wall in the kitchen, and she was like, it was a garbage wall. There were flies. I didn't know what to do. And I was like, oh, no, because she hates taking out the garbage, and I wasn't there anymore. Wow. He did that. Wow. Some people. Indeed. So th- she needs an amusing nickname like the, like the heroin addict. But she wasn't a heroin addict. I, I know, but you, ha- you have a nickname for the heroin addict, so you need to give her a nickname like that. Um, the least Garbage Wall? Know? Garbage Wall does. I, I found out later through Facebook, she's actually still friends with a friend of mine, and she ended up marrying that kid that she was, that he, she had this Asian kid she was always tagging after, and finally they got married, so. Oh. There you go. The, um, oh, this is completely not about Mildred, but I'm just remembering something very clever I said. Hmm. Um, right after watching The Hobbit, now this is not a spoiler for the film or anything like that, but I was standing there with the minions, and they were, a bunch of the minions were debating whether they're gonna go to get some food before they went home, or go home and then order food. And then uh, someone else was debating that they want to go off, get food, and then come back and watch something else in the cinema. So then I sort of, you know, grabbed the guy and he went, because he was trying to convince Teddy to go to join him in doing this. And I was, you know, sort of grabbed him and I was yelled, "Do you really expect him to be to go there and back again?" Wah, wah, wah. And uh, one of the people who overheard this gave me like a, a high five for that one. <laughs> that totally has everything to do with mildew. 
I, I said at the start it didn't, but I just remembered it. I know. But well, you guys, you, your mold is different over there. I think so. Um, maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe I don't spend enough time in the places that are covered in mildew and stuff, but... <laughs> like your entire I, country. <laughs> but I don't think that, on average, we have as many uh, killer molds as you guys. Like, you know, if you leave stuff there, and it's it's not a good thing, but I haven't come across dangerous molds in in in, in your Europe... But maybe I haven't just haven't noticed. Well, we have black mold, and that can that can kill you. It releases neurotoxins. Like you always hear these horror stories about people who like they buy these dream houses, and but the contracting was done really cheaply, and there's a leak in the wall that goes on for years, and then their whole entire like black mold is everywhere, and they only notice it when they start getting really really sick of things, and then you know they, they bust open a place in the basement, and the black mold is all in all parts of their house, and then they have to move out, and yeah. Yeah, my uh, my parents' house. They had a, a thing. They had a hole in their in their kitchen wall for probably about three years and didn't notice. Yeah, but see, in America, like that kind of thing, like if you got black mold in there, you'd just have to basically tear down the entire house because yeah, of the and, toxins. And that there was no mold problems or anything. It was just a that it was a, it was a it was a hole that was used for like this piece of cable and stuff, which was never filled in and they were fine now there's probably some types of not very good for you mold around but I don't really know much about it I know that there was mold in uh, Teddy's house that we, he currently lives in and, and films we filmed the episodes in um, but I don't think there's anything there that will kill you it's just that because the house had been left untouched for like four years so the stuff was it had to be replaced but it wasn't going to kill you as as I understand it well, that's well. Again, everything in America is serious, and everything over yours is not very much. Yeah, Europe as a continent, it's the it's the tutorial level when it comes to if if the continents were a video game. Well, also, you. I mean, there's some stuff that we do that that you guys don't. I mean, like I know that like a lot of public health stuff you'll do. Yeah. Because you can just say, oh, by the way, the Queen said this is how it's going to be public health wise, and there you go. Uh, possibly not how it works, but um. But yeah, we are we are on average more public health related, sort of interested. Well, do you guys do you have fluoride in your water? Uh, yes, and I'm fairly sure that like most of the rest of the world, you know, Africa, Middle East, and Asia sort of look at us and go, "Those guys are wusses." Probably, like we have Ebola in our water. Well, you know, I was at I went to. Okay, it gives a nice gives it a nice tart taste. Ew. <laughs> Artificially flavored with Ebola. But no, today I was at Target, and I was leaving Target, and I was stopped at that light there, and there was more traffic than usual because, you know, it's a week before Christmas. So I was at this really long light, and I was waiting, and there was a dentist office across the across the stoplight, and it had a sign out that said, Moms who care choose no fluoride. Uh, what was their context? Was that like for toothpaste or fluoride treatments or water? Sure because there's... Fluoride in, in the tap water, and I know that happened a while back, and and that was a thing. And when I was little, I remember, like, about every six months or so, getting fluoride treatments. And then it eventually, at some point, they stopped, and I'm not sure if it was because I was old enough that they figured, you know, it didn't matter anymore, or if they figured, oh, well, I got enough from the tap water. But I remember having to get it done, and you got these little styrofoam thingies that fit in your mouth almost like a sports mouth protector. And then you got to choose the flavor of the fluoride gel, and you sat there for, I think, like 15 or 20 minutes aside, trying desperately not to throw up. But so it really confused me. So I meant, I thought, do they mean don't drink fluorinated tap water? Don't come in and ask for fluoride treatments? Like, what's... There's a couple of possibilities I can think of. Like, maybe... uh the best one I can think of is probably, hey, we've got fluoride in the, in the water here, and there might be some sort of medical issue if you have small children and you give them fluoride treatments as well. You might give them a dangerous amount of fluoride. I don't know how much fluoride would be needed for that. That's the best possible one I can think of. Like The worst would be, it, since it's a dentist and they're wanting profit, it might be that people that saying, avoid fluoride, therefore your teeth get worse, therefore we can do work on you for and get money. I guess it was just it it, it, was, it kind of felt like a pediatrician telling people not to vaccinate. Some of them do do that, but they're stupid. Yeah, it's just I I don't know like we worry right. about the stupidest shit these days. Or maybe I guess like 
they're trying to dissuade people from give, giving their kids a fluoride fetish. I, I don't know. <laughs> There's conventions for that now. <laughs> Probably should be. It would be very interesting. Fluoride fetish. Oh yeah, that's the John Birch Society. Huh? The John Birch Society. They're the racists. They're racist on their conspiracy theories and they're crazy. They're the guys who were warning against fluoride in the water that it was a communist plot. But, see, here's the thing. Okay, I'm going to break it down for a second. Even though I really only, you know, rant like this on, on Gomer show when I co-host. But, like... Break it down. <laughs> the United... Okay, here's the thing. You guys, take notes. Start taking notes right now. If you've never believed or, or taken to heart anything I've said before now, take this and believe it to heart. Okay, America is huge. It's huge. I think, like, it's the size of Australia, or close. But it's big. It's, like, bigger than some parts of Europe. You know, like, there are countries that it's, you could fit easily into states. It's it's um, it's bigger than, actually, I'm fairly sure it's bigger than most of the continent of Europe. Exactly. Plus, there's about a bajillion of us. Okay, mostly concentrated in big cities, but there's about a bajillion of us. So here's the thing. Going communist, fascist, or socialist will never happen. Do you know the kind of... You, you'd need at least 75 to 80 percent of the support of the population, and that's never going to happen. Communism would never work over here because of the sheer size of both the country and the population. And the same that people say, oh, well, yeah, but the, the, the government and, and, and or the, the military is the only thing that's saving us from an invasion. There's no one that's going to invade. Population-wise, the only two, the only three countries that could put boots on the ground, full-scale invasion in the United States would be China, India, or the USSR, or Russia, or whatever we're calling it now. Russia's not going to do that because basically Vladimir Putin is sitting back there with his feet on the tiger skin resting stool that he probably has, with his shirt off saying, I'm the boss, yeah, except for in Russian. He's big pimpin'. He doesn't need a boots on the ground, full scale invasion of the United States. India, they have, first of all, they have their own problems. I don't think they could raise the amount of money that would a full scale land invasion would require. Second of all, like China, they're, you know, balls to the wall, full steam ahead, trying to build up a new economy. No one is going to take over the United States. Oh, FEMA, no, FEMA, shit, FEMA. Do you know how many people work for FEMA? Compare that to the amount of people in the United States. All right, that's been your talk for today. I think the guys who worry about all that sort of stuff might actually just be a personification of William Shakespeare's uneasy lies the head that wears the crown, because America is, is still right now the number one country in the world, so the people who are in there who are pretty stupid are really worried about someone else taking over. There, there is more chance of Will Smith being needed to repel an alien invasion than there is of a giant full-scale land invasion of the United States. I hate to tell everyone, but it's kind of the truth. That's very true, although America may well lose its place economically. That's fine. It's just no one's going to invade us. Nobody could. You need... I mean, I guess I could see if you had a large-scale bombing campaign first. You know, it would have to be nukes to, to decimate the population and resistance. But then again, the Air Force is really good. So you'd have to... It's just... It's 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 impossible. Well, there, is, there, there was the interview on, I believe it was Fox News, that Jesse Ventura did, where he explained how he... If, he, if someone gave him... I think it was 18 Navy SEALs, how he could bring America to its knees, and he explained how to do it, and it was rather amusing. Yes, but he probably also masturbates to copies of Guns and Ammo. Let's it's, just say it. It's true, but his his way of doing it seemed, at least, from, it seemed logically sound, which is something you don't often say when you're dealing with Jesse Ventura. Um, he's better when he's played by Linkara, just saying. <laughs> but his logic was uh, taking the inspiration from the the DC uh, DC sniper was if he put his team up, if he got them and he split them to teams of four and got them to go to places where multiple states join up and then started doing basically DC sniper stuff, you could probably panic the entire country. Yeah, you could panic the entire country until those states sent out the National Guard. That's true. Every single one of those states will send out the National Guard. And if people are panicked, they're going to be inside their home. That's what, that's what happened during the DC sniper episode. They told people only go outside if you really have to. So the only people who will be outside will be the National Guard and the snipers. That is true. It's. I don't think he was suggesting... Oh, I should, should be governor. You could be the governor. governor. There was 
there was a wonderful time in like ten years ago or so when Jess and and Arnie were both governors when it was it seemed like they were slowly trying to make sure just in case the aliens invaded that the entire cast of Predator were governors because Sonny Landon who played Billy he ran for Arizona governor and he didn't get it and it was like oh damn it I wanted the whole set <laughs> box set of governors yeah yeah I would you know. I forget his name. At the moment, I've forgotten his name, but uh, he played Dylan, and he was uh, ah, and he played he was Action Jackson. You imagine him uh, as the governor of I don't know Nevada, and get uh, the guy who played Mac as the governor of I don't know Massachusetts for some reason. Scott Lively is is running for governor of Massachusetts. The guy that's, who's you know trying to defend himself against crimes against humanity. That's going to be hilarious, because. Massachusetts, okay, Massachusetts are very, 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 very into gay rights. But on the other hand, they do love assholes. I think their love of gay rights will will, will win, though. Yeah, that's true. But anyway, <laughs> moving on. It's going to be such a, a bloodbath that it's like, Scott Lively. You know Every what it's going to be? Wall-to-wall gifs of Michael Jackson eating popcorn. That's what that's going to be. <laughs> Just like, saying. It's like, whoever's, whoever, who's ever, like, whoever's on the Democrat side... Ninety-eight point seven percent of the vote. Scott Lively, two votes. Both of them are people who have written on the ballot that they're only like they're only voting for you because it's funny. <laughs> but anyway, I saw at your recommendation, I saw a movie the other day. Over. Usually, yeah. you usually you feel like crying when that happens. Yeah, that's true. But this time it was a movie that I somewhat knew stuff about. Well, okay, I knew a lot about, so I knew that it was going to be okay. Would you like to tell everyone? What it was? It was the Kark Distal. Don't. My, my spoonerism didn't quite work. I know it didn't. That's why I said don't do that. We saw the reconstructed director's cut of The Dark Crystal. Um, and the backstory for this: before The Dark Crystal became the film that everyone, uh, you know, knows and most people seem to have affection for, it was. It was first of all made, and then it was shown to audiences, and the audiences reacted pretty badly to it. So then they spent another year basically making it more mainstream. Uh, they they made most of the main characters speak English, because in the original version of this kid's film, most of the main characters didn't speak English, and there weren't any subtitles. And uh, they changed some voices and things like that, and re-edited it and cut pieces down. And they made this... They made it a lot more normal, and a lot more... I really don't like using the word mainstream because it makes me sound like a hipster, but they did make it more mainstream. And it's on it's on YouTube. It, in fact, I have the window open so I can tell you uh, the username. Um, Scoodidabop. And I'll spell it S-C-O-O-D-I-D-A-B-O-P. Yeah, this guy... They, they put took, it together. Yeah, they took... They got the audio for the original director's version, and then they spent the next two and a half years editing together from various sources all the different takes and stuff to That's try and make, make it into a cohesive thing. Like, parts that are in black and white are on old VHS copies, and I don't know where they got some of the stuff, but it's like, I really think that the next DVD release of this film should feature this as, like, a second disc. That'd be pretty awesome. I'd buy that. But the one of the things that's interesting is having the Skeksis not speak English, and a lot of the other things that they cut out from the original, um, the original ch- showing... I think it's it's losing something in in the uh, the version that everyone knows because it, for one the Skeksis seemed like more like a race like you see guards and you know minor Skeksis and in the uh, in the version that everyone knows it seems like it always seemed to me as a child that you'd had like five or six old Skeksis living around in a tower but this actually made it seem like they were a race and they showed the the funeral for the for the head emperor. It's like they have a religion. It almost has a very Eastern Roman or Byzantine feel to their society. Trial by stone! Ah, trial by stone! Although I have to confess that I, I still can't watch the scene where the emperor dies. I had it, I, I had it open because when I, it, when I was little, it terrified me. So I, I had the... Ah, my, my baby. Except it didn't sound like you. <laughs> But no, so I had I had it open. I had the YouTube window open in one tab, and then I tabbed over to Reddit, and, and I browsed Reddit until that scene was over. Yes, I find that mildly comical because, as in my experience, the one the scene from The Dark Crystal that people saw as a child and terrified them 
was the scene where the podling got their got their life sucked out of them. Yeah, but they were still alive. They just became like the drone servants. So they hadn't, you know, they had something taken away from them, but they were still technically alive. Whereas the emperor, like, and then he like dissolves into dust immediately. And for some reason, I just found that horrifying. It's interesting to see, you know, what what different people react to in different ways. Also, the the crab beetles are still scary. Oh, the the Garthams. Yeah, no matter how you slice it. Garthams! Gelfling. I want to see Gelfling Batman in Gartham City. Oh, that's it. You're fired. <laughs> fired from the podcast. Go clean out your locker. I don't have a locker. Whatever. Oh, and you know what else I noticed? Mm-hmm. And I, I think this only came to me because I, I had a few beers before I sat down to watch this. Was that um, the, the Gelfling character design? It makes it look almost like they're um, they're descended from mice. Yeah, I can like see that. Like the ears and, and the mouth and the nose and everything. So it's kind of like an alternate evolution if you think about it, because the the podlings look almost as if they could be descended of small monkeys, like spider monkeys. So they yeah. could be the, the the primate race, and it was it was interesting. And they had um, Agra, the sort of the elderly woman character. She uh, she had a completely different voice, although it was I'm fairly sure it was done by. Um, it sounded like it was done by Frank Oz. Yeah, the, uh, the I'm sure the other one was done by Frank Oz as well. It's just Frank Oz did a different voice for it. A uh, slight uh, the 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 one that everyone's seen is a less androgynous version, while the original version was more androgynous. They didn't have any voiceover explaining shit. So, oh yeah, when they when they do the mind meld thing, it's not explained until like five minutes later. He was like, "So that was weird." And she's like, "Oh, it's a Gelfling thing." It was like, "Oh, I get it." Yeah, it's if you haven't seen the original version, then I, I I can understand why it would be very confusing for a kids' film. Oh, and the part with like the prophecy and the and the hieroglyphs. I see. The problem is the last time I saw Dark Crystal was probably when I was ten or eleven. Um, I, no, I did in my 20s, but I was drunk at the time then, too. So I was having trouble remembering what actually was and wasn't in the movie. <laughs> but I couldn't remember. Have I seen this before? Probably. Yeah, I'm fairly sure the prophecy was in there. I, 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 I know the, the trial by stone was extended for the new version. Generally, with this version, I think, rather than watching them side by side or back to back... I think it's if the quality of the visuals is lesser, then that means that that's new mm. or or old. Well, yeah, there were times when it would fade back in to uh, to another cut from another one. Yeah, and there's bits where you've got uh, you've got audio f- problems and stuff. It's but it's really really fascinating. And of course, Dark Crystal was done long before DVD. Whenever people would usually cut up films. And then they would lose the the footage because it was not was not necessary because uh, yeah, even the concept of a director's cut didn't exist, yeah. which is really upsetting for someone like me who is really into film. It's it's a wonder that there's you know films like The Wicker Man, the original 1970s British one. It's it's a wonder the original cut of that survived because the guy who uh, who one of the guys who was in charge of the cu- the final cut hated the director's cut so much. But allegedly, he had um, every copy he could grab a hold of it, sort of thrown into a thrown into a building site, and then you know, and then which was later turned into a road. Why are directors crazy? That wasn't the director. That was a guy who was higher up in the studio or whatever oh. it was. But the but um, apparently they discovered, or they managed to reconstruct. I'm not too sure. A copy of the of the original version, and that's what is you can buy on DVD now. I never saw the original. I just saw the one with Nicolas Cage. But I don't think that counts because I saw it with the Riff Track soundtrack. So, yeah, the, the Nicolas Cage one. I thought it was an okay remake. And we I, only I, watched it because we just bought the Riff Track soundtracks. <laughs> Everyone else seems to think it's really terrible. I didn't think it was that bad, but the uh, the original sort of Wicker Man. The yes. original cut was fine, but the director's cut was was better. I see. And it's the the Wicker Man is unique because it is a it's a it's a horror movie musical, and it's that's not to say it's a musical which has horror trappings like say Sweeney Todd, or uh, Repo or whatever. But Repo is awesome. Well, this is actually a horror movie, which has songs as part of the story, which is very unusual. But Zydrate comes in a little glass vial. A little glass vial. A little glass vial. I for, here's the thing, like I. First saw Repo, I think it was on my birthday, 
in 2010. And um, I immediately, you know, pirated the soundtrack. And so I will still listen to the soundtrack, but even just like one song from Repo. And all of a sudden, it's, you know, 5.30 in the morning, you know, and it's 15 degrees outside. And I'm standing at a bus stop in suburban Virginia, smoking a cigarette, listening to my iPod, waiting for the bus. So, like, I can't listen, I can't even watch the, the movie anymore, which I own on DVD. Because it reminds me of, like, living down in D.C. <laughs> but I still love it. <laughs> oh. Chris, the, uh, the Wicker Man, uh, the British Wicker Man, the guy who directed it has the dubious honor of making a sequel to it, which is considered to be even worse than the terrible remake of the, of the Wicker Man from America. So there's a guy who made a sequel to the Nicolas Cage one? Oh, no, he made a sequel to the original Oh. Which is considered to be as bad as, or possibly worse than the American one. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. And it's called The Wicker Tree. And he, the poor guy, he was trying to get this off the ground for like 15 years. Oh, I remember you talking about this, I think, when it first came out. And I was like, that's cool. And then I abruptly forgot about it. Yeah, he, he tried for ages. And, you know, Christopher Lee was meant to reprise his role as Lord Summer Isle, and it was going to be amazing. And Sean Astin was attached to Star for a while. It was about gospel singers going to Scotland and getting, you know, basically burned to death. Ha, ha, ha. I would pay to see gospel singers burned to death in Scotland. But then uh, it took so long to get it made that uh, Christopher Lee. Anymore? No, Chris, no. So someone paid the money, so it was fine. But Christopher Lee got so old and so infirm that he wasn't able to physically play the part anymore. So mm-hmm. they had to recast the part, and then they gave Christopher Lee a little cameo playing Lord Summer Isle in this flashback. But unfortunately, they had the flashback being done by a guy who's in his 50s, and he's remembering himself as a small boy talking to Lord Summer Isle, who's in his 80s. Whenever Lord Summer Isle was middle-aged in the 1970s, and if this guy was in his 50s, then 50 years ago was like the 1960s, so Lord Summer Isle should have been like in his 40s. So it makes no fucking sense. And it's got terrible green screen in the, in the Christopher Lee bit because they couldn't get him on location because he was too sick at the time. And there's no Sean Astin, and it's it's okay. It's just Jesus Christ. It's not I, what you were promised. I really hope they don't do another one. Although he's talking about doing a third one, I really hope they go back to the original name of the second one because it's so fucking funny, though. What was it supposed to be? The Riding of the Laddie. <laughs> That's such a good. It does sound like somebody from like rural Scotland or something, and they've come into the city to go to a dirty bookshop, <laughs> and they're asking for porn, but like it's old, like you know Sir Walter Scott era kind of porn. <laughs> you have the writing of the laddie. <laughs> if you yeah. don't have that, I'll take the one about sheep. <laughs> don't tell your dad I said. This. And haggis. No, I'll stuff her haggis. <laughs> All right, I'm done now. Sorry about that. Sorry. But, but or, yeah, the, like if it was written by Robert Burns. <laughs> the writing of the laddie. Dirty poems <laughs> by Robert Burns. <laughs> but the, yeah, it's it's like broad comedy, and it's it's not as bad as most people think. But then again, I think the Nicolas Cage one isn't quite as bad as everyone thinks. But um, definitely none of them can hold a candle to the to the actual proper Wicker Man. And I don't know if you've ever seen it, honey, but uh, Christopher Lee dresses up in a really gauche gown with a long black wig, and it really looks like Saruman when he was a drag queen in his youth. Christopher Lee is always doing something inappropriate, honey. Yeah, today he just released little demos from a new, for a Christmas single he's putting out, which is him singing Jingle Bells and uh, and My Way as a but you know with a heavy metal band. Right. So speaking of someone that's not Christopher Lee, it's Tony Goldmark. Yay! Yay! Okay, everyone, welcome back to Lesbian Tuck KLFM, home of smooth jazz. You don't even know what jazz is. You're from the United Kingdom. Jazz that is smooth. Smoother <sighs> than um, something that's sharp. That's the worst thing ever. <laughs> and smoother sharp. than something that's sharp. Sharper than a page of Oscar Wilde witticisms that have been scrolled, rolled up into a point, sprinkled with lemon juice, and jammed into someone's eye. Okay, good. You went with eye. I wasn't sure what you were going to say next. Anus was a possibility. I was, uh, in that last part, just quitting Red Dwarf. Oh. See, you should have just played it off, and I would have thought you were brilliant. 
Well, I am brilliant, but uh, at least one fan would have pointed it out. That's true. (laughs) So, now it's time for his favorite part of the show. It's Giovanni's Trivia Time, and Giovanni, are you with us today? Yeah, well, sure I am. So, how are you, my adoring radio public? Giovanni, we love you, Giovanni. Somehow I suspect that was not my adoring radio public. Giovanni. In fact, it sounds like Hagen, if she were a Wookiee. Giovanni. So anyway, let's have a history trivia fact today, shall we? Yay! Stop it. Did you know that Ahoy was the original telephone greeting? It's true. Alexander Graham Bell suggested Ahoy as used in ships, but it was later superseded by Thomas Edison, who suggested hello instead. Because everyone knows that Thomas Edison was an asshole, and then Nikola, Nikola Tesla is better. No, we love you, buddy. You do sound like a Wookiee, you know. I never sound like a Wookiee. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, the versions of that story that I'd heard, it was um, Alexander Graham Bell suggesting Ahoy Hoy, and that's why Mr. Burns uh, says Ahoy Hoy when he answers the telephone in The Simpsons, because I think for the first like couple of years, it was quite popular as a telephone greeting, and then obviously Hello took over. And, the, and so The Simpsons joke was, haha, Mr. Burns still thinks it's like the first couple of years of telephone. So, but uh, either of them could be true, but what's definitely true is Alexander Graham Bell not quite the telephone inventor uh, there, there's controversy there but he was definitely Scottish well I'm sure he wore a kilt at the time but that's it for my little bit I'm going to run off and watch me some Christmas specials <laughs> especially the Charlie Brown one the little loser tree <laughs> but I'll see you on next week everyone fish 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 what fish fish You worry me sometimes. Just saying. Fish. Stop saying fish. Fish. No. And anyway, it's everyone else's favorite uh, part of the show. Uh, If you've just joined us, this is your first time listening to Lesbian Talk. I have worked for the past ten years at a large chain bookstore, and I've seen it all, especially this time of year, and this is a story about that. So, the holidays are upon us, are they not, dear? Well, it depends what you define as a holiday. The big ones, the holiday, the the syphilis of holidays, as it were. Although you're you're right, you know what really really important religious connected a day is coming up very shortly. In a few days, it is, but it is Thor's day. <sighs> you gotta drink flagons of mead and like kill people. Do you know that I was at Target today and I nearly bought you a Thor stocking, but then you had a stocking already, so I didn't. <laughs> but anyway, it's. It's that time. It's crunch time if you work in retail, and people have gone to like light from lighthearted and friendly to like super ultra crisis time, because around here, especially you know in my area, we have had a few snowstorms, and they've been daytime snowstorms that have impacted um, the weekend traffic. So you have increasingly fewer and fewer days left to shop, and the weather's been getting increasingly worse. So people have been, of course, increasingly crazy. Alaska is up north laughing at your snowstorm. Probably. I mean, they're not really bad storms. Stuff like, you know, you know, five to six inches, two to three inches. But we've had a lot of ice, and that impacts stuff because it makes travel very difficult. But So on Sunday, I was uh, I spent the day cash wrap. I spent the day ringing. And I had – it was it was just nonstop, which is good because it makes the time pass faster. But just the sheer amount of weirdness that I saw – like, there was one woman who was just so annoyed. Like, I was like, did you find everything you wanted? Well, no, not really. Oh, if you go over to customer service, no, they're not going to be able to help me. Um, okay. So I'm, I'm ringing- after a massive dildo. <laughs> so I'm ringing up this woman's purchase. And she Made goes, of books. Made of books. <laughs> that probably exists somewhere. There's probably a better site out there. Yeah. But so I'm ringing up her purchases, and she goes, well, you know, Amazon has everything cheaper than you guys. And I don't know why people say that to me as if, like, I should be upset, you know? So, and and I, it was kind of towards the end of my shift, and I was feeling saucy at that point anyway. And I said, well, ma'am, you know, we don't work on commission here. You know, we just sell the books, and that's how it goes. And she goes, well, it's that kind of attitude that's losing you business. You should care that Amazon has it cheaper than you. Like, I'm going to run home and clutch at my pearls and stay up nights worrying at the fact that Amazon has something cheaper than we do. Yeah, the, the, the difference in the cost is the fact, is the extra money that they are paying to deal with you in person. 
Well, yeah, it's a it's it's overhead charge. I mean, it's paying for the electricity to run the building. You know, it was paying for the electricity that goes to the cafe. You know that so they can have their lattes. You know, it's yeah. uh, as I like to call it, instant gratification tax. I'd call it uh, the Omega tax because it's like. Do you really want to pay less money to deal with someone who's not Omega? I didn't think so. But it's just... its This is why I am so happy to pay the extra money just to be your wife. Aw. Wait a minute. <laughs> Who are you paying to be my wife? I don't know, but if you don't know about this, then you know your business plan is terrible. <laughs> someone else's is brilliant. Listen, you. And I had another, I had another person... And so the, the first question that we ask at the register right now is, do you want any gift receipts? Because it's really easy to just press a single button you know, or a combination of buttons during the transaction to automatically print them out. We can even do them all in one receipt. We can do multiple receipts. But it's difficult to do after the transaction because we have to call someone to put in the code for that. So that's what I've just been saying. Automatically, it's the first question I ask. need to get receipts. And people just say, no, this is for me, or, yeah, I guess you better, you know. And I had this one little old lady. I said, no, man, did you want any gift receipts? She goes, yes, because if they return, I damn well want to know. And I had to explain to her that's not exactly how that works. <laughs> the, uh, I know I that. I like, call her up, be like, is this Mrs. Smith? Yeah, she did, dear. We just wanted to let you know that your relative has returned something on a gift receipt. Oh, no. Teddy and uh, Avatar of Decent Humor bought their Christmas presents for people, and uh, rather than actually buy presents, they bought a bunch of gift cards for our local bowling alley, because the, it's, the bowling alley has a cinema, it's got an arcade, it's that. got I a restaurant, that. it's got a casino, it's got a cafe, it's got a kid's ballpark, it's all connected into one thing, so it's like, yeah, er, er, literally everyone in, the, in who we have, have to buy a gift for will, would find something to do there for a few hours. So there you go. I think I think that's a great idea. They know what I'm getting them, which is Peeps and peanut butter M&Ms. Because but, that's peanut what they but, requested. I thought Nicola preferred the, the uh, what do you call it, pretzel M&Ms. Well, I said, what do you guys want me to, to give to you to bring back? And she said, Peeps, please, and peanut butter M&Ms for Colin. And I said, all right. Fair enough. Uh, the, uh, but you really like the the bowling alley in Derry. That's cool. It's it's really awesome. It's a, it's a good good entertainment concept. Guys who are listening to this, you have no idea how long we spent using this little machine. That that <laughs> it took two two pence coins. Yeah, you put two pence coins in there, and then they sort of try to push other two pence coins. Because if so, you've never seen a two pence coin, it's huge. It's like bigger than a quarter. Yeah, it's it's, be, it's between the size of a quarter and a fifty cent piece. And we, uh, because we had like an hour until Robin the Minion was going to turn up. So on twenty p, we managed to to uh, basically recycle their two p coins for about half an hour, and then we decided to get because they also had hundred point tickets in there, which would give us stuff we could we could buy we could get stuff prize prize yeah, we could get prizes. So we then like broke a pound and was like, okay, we'll put two P's in there until we got like a hundred points, and then we got like prizes and stuff. And yeah, it's one of those machines where the thing's always going back and forth. So you drop one in and it pushes coins down, and so literally it was like forty minutes we spent just. And every time like a new wave of them would fall down into the thing, instead of taking the two P to like have, he would just keep putting them back in, and yeah, because it was had still no life. So. But- well, then, because the hundred the hundred points is probably worth about one fifty, and the amount of money we spent overall, I think, was probably about one twenty. So it was like profit, and and the time wasting. And <laughs> two pence. <laughs> but anyway, today for our secondary topic, we're actually going to be topical, and talk about things that enrich your life. Topical, topical, topical. Is that your little song for it? That's the theme song. Okay. So there have been um, a lot of stuff going on in the news. Um, and not just the, the stuff over in Russia, because that's been going on for many months now. But this week... Um, hey, Russia. Fuck you. Yeah. Bit Vladimir Putin is going to come here and kick our asses, probably. Yeah, yeah. I got an idea. Let's do a whole like musical where we can make pretend that Vladimir Putin's gay and call it Putin on the Ritz. <sighs> Be so camp, and then Putin would be like sitting there in his uh, like Wolverine skin jacket, being all like crying one tear because he knows it's true. Deep I imagine him kind of like 
the Russian billionaire in the there was a series of cable commercials and then one he has a little teacup giraffe. It's all CGI, but I want a teacup giraffe. And that's how I kind of imagine Vladimir Putin. Like if he wanted to have like Wolverine claws like in, surgically inserted into himself, he could probably have it done. He yeah, uh, he's crying one tear because he knows deep down that that we're right. That's true. But yeah, so the Indian Supreme Court um, this 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 week just and it was this was like kind of shocking and it really came out of nowhere apparently to to most of India that they have recriminalized homosexuality out of fucking nowhere. That's because the people who are well, I I will moderate my comments and just sort of say pieces of shit. But then on the other side in Northern Ireland, which is as you described it, Alabama only Irish. They have legalized uh, same-sex adoption, which is really surprising. I really have to do more. You guys shouldn't even have gay marriage. Well, they have civil partnerships, which legally in the UK has the, the exact same. Okay, yes, you but know. only because England made you. Let's be honest here. Yeah, yeah. The rest of the UK forced them. The way that the marriage laws in the UK run is that there is no equivalent of federal marriage laws. There's just the individual parts of the UK. Well, but, but civil partnerships was a totally new thing, so that was decided to bring it down for the entire of the UK rather than let it be country by country. And when they brought in civil partnerships, I don't know if this was deliberate or not, but Northern Ireland got civil partnerships a day before the rest of the UK, and it might have been a way just to sort of rub their rub their face in it. That's what you get for being so religious. But um, the the gay adoption thing, I don't know. I, I don't think this was a UK forced it on the on Northern Ireland thing. Uh, well, apparently, according to the article, it was um, for same-sex couples, but also um, unmarried uh, straight couples. So it might have been one of those things where it was the law was being changed for unmarried straight couples, and then somebody put in homosexuals at the last minute. Yeah, it might be one of those things that if they had homosexuals not included, then it would be uh, sort of Northern Ireland in the breach of the UK's equality law. Yeah. Which, which I can see. It's, it's definitely not the sort of thing that Northern Ireland would leap headfirst into deliberately. Yeah, because it's like no offense. Like I don't see this being Northern Ireland's plan. I mean, yeah. no offense, you guys. No, that's it's it's. You can't really say like no offense because I'm not saying it isn't offensive. Uh, no, but any of our it, listeners who are Northern Irish, they'd be like, I'm offended. Hey, it's or hi. I'm offended, hi. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's much more offensive, you know, the actions of Northern Ireland in general over gay people is much more offensive. It's, Northern Ireland is. I know, is, honey, but tis the season. On average, very bigoted. I know, honey, but tis the season to be offended. I don't care. <laughs> Besides, you know, I'm Northern Irish, I'm allowed to say what I like. Except, Except for that if old you're couple. on a bus. Yeah. Did we tell that story? I don't think so, you should tell it again. Okay, so there we are, driving from Belf- from Dublin to Belfast, because I just picked a make up from the airport, you know, we're on a bus, do 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 and we're both very tired, so I was just explaining stuff about Northern Ireland, which I'd probably explained previously, but I was trying to entertain her for the two-hour bus ride, and I'd explained that in Northern Ireland, that there is such a thing as, is co- sometimes colloquially known as rioting season, and... But it sounds like there should be like, you know, like Sears would be like, hey, so it's rioting season. Don't forget to pick up your essentials. Now it's Sears. And That's what it sounds like, honey. Yeah. But I explained this and then, you know, and then I said something along the lines of the Northern Irish love to riot. And I didn't mean every Northern Irish person. I just meant broadly, culturally, there is a lot of it happening in Northern Ireland. It's like saying the English love cricket. A lot of them do. Not all of them. That would be ridiculous. Or the Americans love their government spying on them. A lot of them do. Not everyone does. The touche. <laughs> but then this this little old lady sort of looked over me, really, really angry. It's like I live in Northern Ireland. How dare you say such things? And I try try to. Why did you think you were from the south? Because you don't sound like you have a southern <laughs> Republic Ireland accent. I have no idea. Maybe she thought I was American, but. Uh, I explained, I'm from Northern Ireland as well. I got every right to fucking say what I like, but I could invent shit about Northern Ireland that's really offensive and claim it as truth if I felt like it. And then, like, she got all snotty, and then her husband moved, and then she just kept, for, like, the next 20 minutes, turning the pages of her magazine very ang- angrily, with much vitriol. Yeah, and if she said anything else, I, I was just I was just on the brink of being tired enough to not care what she thought. So if she'd said anything else, I probably would have responded in kind so yeah 
that's how hardcore it is. Yeah, gen- generally when I have conflict like that, I'm quiet and stuff because I generally don't want to piss people off. I only like pissing people off if they've done something to piss me off. Or, or if it's on your net forums. Yeah, well, that's just a, a debate, so that's fine. That's separate. But in real life, I really don't want to hurt people. So I'm usually very quiet and I try to avoid conflict. But whenever I'm really tired, I don't care. I, I, I've been up for uh, about 24 hours. Oh, yeah, that's true. You had. Yeah. She was probably a bigot, too. Probably. She's probably like, oh, the gays, dear. Like, okay, that didn't sound very bigoted, but, you know. You know <laughs> no, I'm happy because that means that, you know, if, if we ever settle in Northern Ireland, we can adopt. And That's then true. move to England. Yeah, I think we. I think moving to England would be the more thing to do immediately type thing. <laughs> like five minutes later, like, well, we have to go. Move to England and I'll see you later. Do-do-do-do. We can go live somewhere in... Uh, Somewhere. I'm sure we could find somewhere nice. We live in Manchester. Manchester, Birmingham. Birmingham, Stoke, Brighton, wherever we can. It would depend. Uh, Scotswoldshire. <laughs> I made uh, it up. Assuming you get your, uh, you know, your degree and you know, license to practice, I think we'd follow where you can get a good job. Well, honey, I don't know if I'd be going into private practice. I want to go into research, but we'll see. We'll see whatever opportunities present themselves. Yeah, we'll, we'll not put our hearts on anywhere. Well, so in in in, in England, is there gay adoption? Yeah. Oh, so that's just... Well, let's just do it there, then. Yeah, Northern Ireland is... I, I think Northern Ireland was the last part of the UK that didn't have it. And of then course, some Scotland, of the Channel Islands. Scotland is going through parliamentary readings, but they said that they expect royal assent by the spring. Yeah, but royal assent is not the last part of it. Royal assent basically means that this is going to become law, or it might become law, but it doesn't actually come into force until a while later. British law takes longer to get going than American law. Yeah, but they thought it was going to take a while for actual marriages, and they said it's, it's going to happen by the end of March. Oh, no, that's English ones, the, the ones that were legalized last summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, that's what I'm talking so about. It, it takes about a year for you to get to becoming a law to actually going into a for effect. Well, that happens a lot of places. Like, in a lot of laws, they'll actually specify to go into effect blah, blah, blah time. Yeah, I just noticed with the the same-sex marriage laws in, in like, America and stuff, it generally works a lot quicker than than the UK one. Like, the UK voted on it and stuff before, uh, before I think before France, and France got it got it going much quicker. Yeah, well, France, their government has to be quick, or they'll, like, overthrow. Bad. Yeah. Why did you make the whip noise for the guillotine? I don't know. I couldn't think of a guillotine sound. There you go. You win. You can just edit that in. For sure. So if anyone has a good guillotine noise right the show. <laughs> but the thing with India, though, I mean, like, I don't mean to be all Western on their asses. But, you know, this is a country that's just now thinking, huh, maybe prosecuting rape gangs is a good idea. And I, I can't really understand that how their laws could be so gender draconian, you know. Well, but then... Of, a, lo- a lot of their laws are a direct result of Victorian British people forcing the, the they forced these laws on them and they haven't a lot of them haven't been updated since then. A lot of the the, the British had a massive impact on the Indian culture. They went from Yeah, but I but I believe going back to even like the times of Buddha that that India has always been a patriarchal society. Depends on not not everywhere in India. There's like little parts where it's not. But yeah, it, it was always. But then again, most cultures were patriarchal throughout history. Not all, but most. Um, but the British sort of Victorian sort of things just like damaged, in Africa damaged them even more. And it's so sad to see cultures that were so fucked up by basically white English people so proudly hold on to the, that fucked up as some sort of defiance against the, of what they see as white fucked up in the form which is which is gay rights. It's so sad. It's like you're holding on to the way that your culture was damaged and distorted and destroyed in an effort to fight back against something which more closely approximates what you started out with. Well, it's like I really feel bad for a lot of the African countries because, you know, you had white settlers, you know, and missionaries come in and be like, this is the way, this is the way things are, blah, blah, blah. And all the tribes were like, no, no, it's not. And they were like, well, too bad, old bean. We've got guns. And so they were like, "Ah, fine, we'll be missionized. But now, you know, the Western world's like, hey, that's so uncool. Freedom of religion and speech, yo. Equal rights for women, yo. You can have an abortion if you choose. 
practice safe sex so you don't get AIDS. You know, like, gay is okay. Now they're like, nope, too late. You gave us these laws, now we're really, really, really all about them, so fuck you. One of the books that's on my list to read is a is a a history of African homosexuality. And actually, if if you found that little approximation of Africa's history offensive, I apologize. Like, even, if I remember correctly, even Shaka Zulu, the most famous example of sort of African sort of patriotism, I don't want to say, but he was sort of like a mythic figure, almost like a King Arthur. You know, he had sex with a bunch of men, as far as I could recall. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think he did. It's really, really fucked up. It's like the Greeks who claim that, homophobic Greeks who claim that Alexander the Great never had sex with men, or the fact that ancient Greece was entirely heterosexual. It's like, really? To quote John Cleese in Faulty Towers, they bloody well invented it. It's it's so sad. It's, it's Whenever you get bigotry against reality... Bigotry against reality, I like how you put that. Bigotry so often wins, and it's so, so sad. Well, it's kind of like, this is like the last great thing, you know? They totally think of the next thing. Pretty much. I mean, you have, like, all these countries who are either, oh, well, we'll jump on the Western bandwagon, we love gays now, it's totally okay, hooray, liberty. And then you have, like, all these evil countries saying, no, ban gays, ban everything, beat them up. It's kind of polarizing, but it makes me happy because a lot of the European um, uh, heads of state are now starting to speak up and say, uh, you know what, we will not be attending the Olympics. Our countries will, but we will not be attending in protest of such and such. That's the absolute minimum that can they can do and remain respectable. Well, I mean, at least they're doing that. I mean, you know, people are saying, well, Obama hasn't spoken up, but I can't see... If he doesn't, I mean, first of all, it's, he planned to go in the in the beginning, and he's busy running the country, so I highly doubt he's going to go to the Olympics. But I'm sure that we'll send some kind of official delegation. I can't see us not. I, I don't even know. Well, Soichi, uh, is, will, will Obama still be president? Yeah, honey. He'll be president until 2016. Isn't, isn't that the year it's happening? No, no, it's happening 2014. It's happening, like, oh, this okay. summer. Oh, no, it's Winter Olympics. Well, yeah, this 2014, in this, after the year turns. Oh, okay. Sorry, I, I, I was... I think so. Somebody Google that and write the show. No one cares what the Olympic, Winter Olympics... I do, if I feel like it. I Which, really hope that they, we have a similar sort of thing at the next World Cup. N- not the one that's coming right up, that's Brazil, I think. The one after that is being taking place in a, in the in Qatar, oh, yeah, in the I Middle East. Oh, yeah, I about this, and they're like, hey... You guys know that there's, like, sex trafficking and, like, all this horrible stuff going on in your country. They're like, pay no mind. Well, the World Cup. Yeah, I really hope people do the similar thing to Qatar because fuck Qatar in the ear. Right in the ear. Yeah, and that's me making fun of a medieval English sort of belief that women's ears were sinful to look at. That's why they had the the ear cups. I I was thinking of the thing from South Park. Fuck him. Fuck him right in the ear. So, yeah. But, um, stuff and things. But, yeah, I mean, I guess you can't police your neighbors. The best you could do is try to do good in your home, so. Right now, um, in Australia, there's the Australian Capital oh. Territory, which is like Washington, D.C. It legalized gay marriage, and they had, like, five days with, with where, where it was legal, and then there was this fight, and, and apparently the Australian Capital Territory lost the legal battle, and... Now the Prime Minister is planning to basically nullify all the marriages done. So it's a bit like Prop 8. Yeah, no offense. Australia, for the three Australians that I know, you're no better. You know? Like, oh yeah, so Britain sent us here to die. Well, screw that. We're going to hew to their stupid Victorian moors. Yep, yep. Well, Australia... Australia is like the Alabama of the UK, because they're a Commonwealth country. Someone referred to it as the Florida of England, which is a funny <laughs> idea. Hey, can Cameron threaten to kick them out of the Commonwealth unless they behave? No. Why? It would take much more than that to be thrown out of the Commonwealth. Yeah, but didn't but, he give a speech like about a year ago, like you know, chastising the the a lot of the Commonwealth countries who are being bad? Yeah, they can they can do that sort of thing, but it would take more than basically nullifying gay marriages for them to get get chucked out. Yeah, get chucked out. But um, the Australian thing, Australia. If I remember correctly, Australia has, for the last, like, five, six, seven years, had 
had had more people being in favor of same sex marriage than opposed to it. Yeah, but all of their all of the politicians are douchebag religious, because religion's real big over there. Religion and wallabies, I guess. They, they just got a they got a if very wallaby, powerful. Right the show. They got a very powerful large minority who are religious, and it's nowhere near as big as the American one, but they get an, an annoying amount of power. The last prime minister before this one, okay, the they had Kevin Rudd who was Prime Minister, and he was very religious and opposed to gay marriage. Then there was Julia Gillard, who was an atheist and opposed to gay marriage. Then there was Kevin Rudd again, who was still very religious, but then was for gay marriage and said that if he'd won the election, he was going to force gay marriage through. Now there's Tony Abbott, who's very religious and against gay marriage. Tony Abbott is basically like Rick Santorum of Australia. Religion is what's wrong with the world. So what's amusing out of these three you know, people who were Australia's Prime Minister in the last few years... Gillard was born in the UK, and so was Tony Abbott. Oh snap! Yeah, yeah. America is one of the few countries that requires your head of the head of state to be born in your country. Most countries don't have that rule. Hmm. That's interesting. Yep. So, like, if somebody was from Eastern Europe and they came over to the UK and they immigrated, and then they became an MP, they could conceivably become prime minister. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Legally, they could. Um, Several prime ministers um, are were of non uh, how they put it at the time non British stock, which is a bit silly term. Like Disraeli was, uh, his family were Eastern European Jews. Uh, the Ed Miliband, who is the or he he is the current head of the opposition, who if Labour win the next election he would be prime minister. His dad was a famed. Uh, Eastern European uh, Jewish communist who survived the Holocaust. Oh, was he the guy that Daily Mail got in trouble for calling a bad, uh, a bad uh, British person? Yeah, even though you know he he his most of his family lost in the Holocaust, he he managed to escape and join the British Navy and stuff, and he was a big communist. But in the UK, I don't I can't think of any prime ministers who actually were born abroad. Actually, wait, there I think one or two might have been born in colonies like Canada or something, but. None recently, but I don't think it's illegal. I think it would be perfectly fine. So the solution to all this is to disband the Commonwealth and have the Queen hit people with her scepter. Amen. And if, if, I, if I remember correctly, one of the guys who ran for Irish presidency last time, they had an election like that. I think he was South African. Is it South awesome. African or from Rhodesia or something? He was this white guy, but he's, and his family were ancestrally Irish, but... He, he had been born and, and raised in, in Africa, and I can't remember his name, but he was gay as well, and he said he wanted them to rejoin the Commonwealth, and he, I think he was an atheist, and he was like, that is the most hilarious person to be the Irish president. Oh I'm God. really sorry he didn't win. Unfortunately, he's passed away, but Nelson Mandela for Irish president. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of the episode. <laughs> no, we can't do that. That would be, be disrespectful. But it's that time again, honey, and by that time, I mean the dictionary. Dictionary. So, page, what page should I turn to? Uh, 310. Okay. While you're doing that. Okay, one or two. Two. Out of 29. Uh, one. HMO. Health Maintenance Organization. <laughs> We're going to have fun with this one. Oh, we can talk about NHS. Excellent. Yeah, because I, I spent many years working in insurance. Excellent. But we shall see you guys later on. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Uh, episode 41 uh, will be recorded probably live with both of us next week. Yeah, so um, it'll be the Christmas episode because it'll be either a few days before or after Christmas that we do it. Yeah, I'm going over to my, I'm going over to Omega's next week. So, um, I'm like this. And then we may well have a MAGFest special at MAGFest, which Christmas. we can arrange it. So, yeah, do you know that our first episode went up 1231 of last year, so it's almost our one-year anniversary? Oh, wow. Mm. We, could, we could totally do an episode then, like the one-year anniversary episode. Did you think that a year later we'd still be doing this? Oh, no. <laughs> we'd do it for a few months and get bored and move on. Well, you know, it, it's, it's okay. You know, some people seem to like it. So, uh, for today, I have been the Omega, and who do you want to have been today? Tony Goldmark. Okay, then. You should probably let him know. <laughs> we should have him on. I know I say it every week, but we'll, we'll have him on eventually. So, we'll see you all next time. See you later. <laughs>